What's up, everybody? Happy February. That means we have a new promotion going on. But before I get into the promotion, the programs that are on sale, I'm going to give away to one of you lucky people for free. So the two programs on sale are MAPS Performance and MAPS Aesthetic. So one is for training like an athlete, so you can move like an athlete. The other one is training like a bodybuilder, so you can look like a bodybuilder. I'm going to give one of you both for free. You just got to do the following. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Click on subscribe and click on notifications. Do all those things, and then if we notify you, if we see your comment, we like it, we notify you, you'll get both programs for free. Now, everybody else, if you want to sign up in the month of February for either Mass Performance, Maps Aesthetic, or both, you can get 50% off. So here's how you do it. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com, click on one of those programs, and then use the code FEB50 for the 50% off discount. By the way, that code works for both, so you can get both for 50% off. One more time, it's FEB50, no space, for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Counting your calories, tracking your macros is a terrible long-term weight loss and fat loss approach. Whoa. I know, people get really upset with that I feel like you're personally attacking me. No. Okay, so- so (laughs) my six-pack bags today. No, (laughs) here's the deal. Better throw that away. No, here's the deal. Look, uh, understanding calories and food and proteins, fats, and carbohydrates is an important piece of the learning process. But a, as a long-term approach, it's terrible because what you don't want to do, and this I've seen this countless times, is nobody wants to live, unless you're a fanatic, right? Nobody wants to live a life where they're constantly counting calories, constantly tracking macros. Weighing, measuring food. It's, it's, it's neurotic, and yeah. it, it's actually a pretty f- uh, short, good shortcut towards dysfunctional eating habits. The long-term approach always, it's always good to, you want to know stuff. You want to be educated on, on food. But you have to work on your behaviors because you want your eating habits to feel natural and comfortable, not stressful and tracking and counting because stressful eating leads to dysfunction. So now that being said, um, there's a there's a huge importance around the education piece of learning. Like, so, I mean, how many times have you guys got a client who doesn't even know what a carb or a protein or a mm-hmm. fat really is? Totally. Uh, and then is completely off when you ask them how many calories uh, they're eating, and then they actually do track it, and you realize it was uh, they were totally underestimating what they were eating. Mm-hmm. So since we know that, right, and we've experienced that, and the only way for them to figure that out is to track. So what does that process look like? So is it okay? We're going to track, even though I believe this is a bad idea long term for your weight loss, but I also recognize that we've got to have an idea of what you're consuming on a regular basis. It, it's a foundational piece to uh, build off of that, right? Like you need the education and the know-how of what you're putting in your body is going to affect you. And so to be able to track is, is crucial in the beginning in terms of just having the awareness of uh, like for some of my clients, just having snacks and, and nuts, for example, like it, that being more calories than they even anticipated, mm-hmm. you know, really played a major factor in them trying to lose weight. So, you know, it just it's just more eye opening to go through the process, and then uh, eventually you understand yourself and your patterns more effectively. Because I feel like common practice in our space is when you're on and you're training. You're in, in dieting, you're tracking. When you're off, you're off. Right. And that and it's just this And the off is cyclical. Way off. Yeah. Right. Off is yes. no tracking, eating eating like an asshole, right. uh, you know, putting on the weight, not exercising, all the stuff, right? And then, okay, I'm getting started again. Call up my trainer Adam. Hey, mm-hmm. what's up, dude? I want to get back in it. I fell, you know, I fell off over the holidays. Mm-hmm. Let's get going again. And then, okay, we're back to tracking. And then we do that for six months, get in some good shape, yeah. and then the cycle starts over again. So when you guys are starting with a client and you understand the value of tracking for educational purposes, but you know the long-term goal is to get them to not track again. What does that conversation look like when you when you when you first start with them? Well, it starts in the beginning. Um, so f- first off, let's back up for a second. Is the obesity ob- epidemic? So, so and we have to separate getting shredded um, and just general health, right? Because if you want to get shredded, you're probably going to have to track. Things need to be much more specific. I'm glad you said that. We're yeah, taking. We're not talking to competitive no people right? no so if, if you're a, if you're a man yeah. and you have good eating behaviors good relationship to food and exercise you're gonna sit around 12 to 16 percent body fat right this is kind of a healthy body fat range you're relatively lean 
you're not going to be uh, unless you're genetically gifted uh, or you exercise that crazy. You're not going to be seven percent, six percent body fat just from kind of you know living your life and eating you know relatively healthy. That comes from really being specific, really tracking. So those are two separate things. But the obesity epidemic is not the result of lack of information and lack of understanding of calories and you know what makes us overweight or overeating i think it, it, it's pretty well established we know you know what causes that overweight people tend to know what causes that and yet they're still 70 80 100 pounds overweight uh, at times so the real issue is are the behaviors is is mm -hmm. the dysfunctional relationship that we have with food where it becomes um, a drug. We self-medicate with it. We have a bad relationship with it. We eat past the point of satiety. We don't identify bad behaviors uh, that we have with nutrition. We hate our bodies, like all these different things. So I think it has to start in the beginning along with tracking because the tracking gives you the information. Like you need to know what a serving of chicken and rice or whatever looks like for your body type. But beyond that, if mm -hmm. you don't identify the real behaviors, here's what will happen. You'll have these, you'll still have these dysfunctions, but now you're fit, you fit the dysfunctions when the, the, within this, you know, rigid box of tracking. And then eventually that bot, you break out of that box. And that's where you get the binge and you get the off the wagon and you get the weight loss and the weight gain type of deal that we see in everybody, right? So that's, this is why, you know, the vast majority of diets fail. It's not the lack of information. It's the, lack of focusing on the root cause uh, of the problem. And so that's why we need to we need to talk about this because mm -hmm. I've seen look, I'll tell you what, I've seen more than my share of people in our space, the fitness fanatics who have such a dysfunctional relationship to eating through tracking. No, it's got to fit in my macros. It's so and neurotic. I it's very neurotic. And that's and I think that as coaches we've learned too that if we simplify the process and and really just present a more uh, effective strategy. So these, there's strategies that will move the needle, but won't be quite as invasive in terms of them having to have this extensive education of, um, you know, how how many uh, pounds or you know ounces or whatever are in in their meat, and you know, like like calculating out all their grams and and uh, macronutrients and calories. Like if we can kind of you know establish some understanding there, but Really, it's like what? Are, what are a better strategy? It's it's you know moving more towards whole foods and eliminating uh, you know some of these um, uh, behaviors. Forget, yeah, behaviors. Yeah, no, you know when they do when they show studies will show that a therapist will get somebody long term success uh, more often and better than somebody that follows a tracking type diet. Now, in the short term, a tracking diet is very effective because you just follow the rules and you you know calories in versus calories out and you lose weight. Long term, it's it obviously fails. Why does a therapist work so well? Because in therapy, they kind of focus on the root, and then the side effect of which is you treat yourself a little bit better, right? Because what you don't here's a good example. Okay, a terrible approach to getting better posture is to constantly have to think about your posture. Like, oh, just think about your posture all day long. Think about how good it needs to be. Like, what a uh, stressful kind of way to live, right? You you want good posture naturally so you can live your life. Having a long-term healthy approach with nutrition is the same. It needs to feel more relaxed, needs to feel less stress. Stress is a strong trigger towards bad relationships with food, overeating, undereating, you know, restriction and binge, that kind of stuff. And tracking all the time, forever, for most people, is a stressful endeavor. It just so is. How, how would you handle a, a client like this? Um, I get married in August. And I want to get in the best shape of my life <laughs> yeah. between now and then. So, yeah. like that—that's my specific goal that I'm asking you. And you got me now today. Yeah. You're on a timeline. Yes. So, what? What does the conversation change? Are you still communicating the same thing, but then maybe your approach is different? Like, what are you saying to that person? Because there are a lot of people. Because I think what you're saying makes total sense for you know the person who decides i'm going to make a, a change in my life i've been overweight for a really long time i've got all these health markers yeah. that are going off my doctor and i, I want to be around for my kids whatever the reason is right, right. They're, they're motivated to make a change in their life and they want to get professional help from someone like one of you and they and they and they sit at you and so that that yeah. makes all sense to me this this conversation the way you're presenting it but then you have the other the other part is or people that come in and say, hey, I've got this specific goal. 
Um, I've got a wedding in X amount of months. Mm -hmm. I want to be in the best shape I can get in at a time. What do you say to that person? Yeah, well, if it's possible, um, then uh, to maintain integrity, I'll, I'm always very honest. Like, okay, well, you want to lose 15 pounds in two and a half months. We can definitely do that. You're not working out now. Your nutrition, you don't really know, you know how to eat in order to get to your particular goals. So here's a deal. We can do it, but it's not a long-term approach. It's not the healthiest approach. So throughout the process, that's how I'm going to educate the person. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to track. You are going to follow these things. But here's why it's going to fail if we don't work on these behaviors, if we don't look at the root cause. And I'll let them know the entire time that this is going to be a failing long-term strategy. Because look, let me ask you guys, yeah. how often... Out of a, out of a hundred people, how many people would succeed long term with that kind of a goal? Oh, they all fail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's why. So you're. Actually. So I, that's what I was looking for from you was something like along those lines because I was hoping you weren't going to say, oh, you would not allow them to track because if you if you want uh, if you have a time frame right a specific that you have to try and and, and get them tracking is going to get there right yeah. I mean tracking is sure. you have to be more specific right like if there the if there is a time frame that I have to be in this shape or the whether it be the best shape of my life or a certain amount of weight by a certain amount of time right. that then for sure I'm going to have you track but what what how I would communicate it is that okay that's fine that's a goal great we're going to do this can I add to that goal mm -hmm. what I want to add to that goal is okay after I get you in the best shape of your life for the wedding I assume that you want to be able to maintain that for the rest of your life. Then allow me to make another goal on top of that is our goal then is to get you away from having to track food and still be able to maintain your weight or your physique the way you, that you would like or your health, whatever, however you want to present it. But uh, I want to add to that goal. So, okay, we're going to be mm -hmm. super rigid. We're going to track. We're going to get as, the most results we can this time. But that's not the end of this process. I'd like to get to a place where we cannot track for a while. I'll monitor you. I'll see what's going on and stuff like that and be checking in with you every week mm -hmm. or two weeks. But the, the ultimate goal is, can I get you in the best shape of your life and then also give you practices that will allow you to maintain and that? And coach you through that process. Yeah. Because that's, yeah. a, that's a coaching process, right? I think the, the ideal situation is to live a life, and again, I'm not talking to fitness maniacs and fanatics. That's a that's 1% of everybody I'm talking to. So for most people, I think ideally what you want is you want to kind of live for most of your life in this general range of health, right? So gen relatively lean, um, d decent mobility, you know, decent strength and stamina, and you feel good for the most part, and that's how you live most of your life. And then from there, that's your base, right? From there, then you, oh, I want to get shredded. Okay, now I'll track and turn up the intensity and the volume. Or, oh, I'm going to compete in a powerlifting competition. Now we tr we do all the stuff to take us to the extreme level. But it's nice when the base is general health and relative leanness. leanness. What you don't yeah. want is what happens to a lot of people where, oh, I want to get shredded, and then there's no base. You know, It goes yeah. way the hell. Like you see people... Post one extreme to the other. Yeah, post bikini show. You know, these are, we're talking about tiny girls, 110 pound girls, gaining 30 pounds in 30 days yeah. after the competition. That's what you don't want to do. Those those crazy swings, and there, we can get into all kinds of conversations to why that's terrible yeah. for your body. But what what we're looking at is always have that long term. How is this going to work for me long term? Because statistically speaking, you know, I don't know how many times I've said this. We don't have a weight loss problem. We have a keep weight off problem. Mm -hmm. And the weight loss issue is easily solved. Okay. You're losing weight, piece of cake. Mm -hmm. Keeping it off, that's the thing we got to talk right. about. That's we need where flexibility. Stuff gets hard. Life just presents you with so many different um, challenges. And, and, you know, you need to be able to not uh, have a decision one day that's really going to affect you, you know, substantially. So to be able to pull yourself into that sort of home base where, um, re you're relatively healthy, relatively strong, relatively lean. You just have a lot more options in terms of which way you can go and navigate through. Totally. So since we're talking about tracking, um, I want to bring up something that uh, Andrew brought to my attention yesterday. So I was working out yesterday and he came over and he was editing some of our clips from- Did you have a, a good workout? It was all right. It, was yeah. a, it wasn't a great workout. You respond quick. Uh, yeah, because I switch everything all at once, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. Katrina says the same thing too. She goes, I, I hate, it frustrates me watching you train because well, bro, you have a, a crazy amount of muscle memory. 
Let's be honest. Well, that's how I try to yeah. explain to her. I said, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a really long time, and I've I know how to tweak everything. That's beside the point, though. Yeah. You're, you're getting me off the Sorry, rails. Sorry, I just want to say something. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I just noticed your arms. Yeah. Um, I didn't train those. So actually. Majestic. So that, those what? Been, yeah, those haven't been Holy trained cow. in a couple months. Uh, okay. So, anyways, um, Andrew comes up and he says. Uh, I, how come you guys yeah. recommended a thousand calorie surplus oh, to the kid on the question the yeah. other day? He's 150 pounds. He said that he's been training for a while and he's been kind of stuck in this plateau and he would consider himself an ectomorph. Mm -hmm. And he and we suggested that and he goes, because I typically hear you guys say somewhere between 250 to 500 and then all of a sudden you say a thousand for yep. that guy. So. I explained to him uh, why you did it. I want to hear you explain because I'm assuming that what I said to him was right yeah, on Yeah, so when we give advice uh, on the podcast to a general audience, you're going to get uh, general advice. When we're talking specifically to someone, the context changes and the advice can, can change. So why did I tell this guy that if he wants to do hit his goal, aim for 1,000 calories uh, over his, uh, his, his maintenance? Okay, so... Let's talk about the for, for a second, and let's paint the context a little bit, right? He'd been working out for years already, so and his goal was to gain 10 to 15 pounds of lean body mass in a year. So very, very challenging goal. First off, yeah, gaining, 10 to, goal. gaining 10 to 15 pounds of lean body mass in your first year of training is a pretty damn, naturally, is a pretty damn big goal. Doing it in your sixth year or fifth year, I think he had been working out for four or five years, Wow, is that really hard, right? Because at that point, your body's pretty resistant. You've already you've already gotten those newbie gains. Very challenging. On top of that, admittedly, he was an ectomorph, uh, saying, or in other words, a hard gainer. So he said, "Yeah, it's really hard for me to put on any weight." And there's definitely an individual variance. Real hard gainers have a very different challenge than the average person when it comes to gaining weight. Just like somebody who gains body fat very easily versus uh, somebody who doesn't gain body fat uh, very easily. The set, another piece of context is what I said afterwards. So I said, aim for 1,000 calories over maintenance. If you start to gain too much body fat, here's the part people leave out, then cut it back. So in other words, aim for 1,000, and if the body fat starts coming on too much, then pull it back. Now, I was aggressive for a couple different reasons. Uh, he had an aggressive goal. He'd already been training for five years. He said he was a hard gainer. Um, and of course there's the, if you gain too much body fat, you can pull back. And also as a coach or as a trainer, I, depending on who I'm talking to, sometimes I give someone a goal knowing they're not going to hit it, but they're going to aim for it. <laughs> so you hit on exactly uh -huh. what I told, yeah. exactly what I told Andrew. I said, you know, I know that Sal's experience told him that that type of person who's giving all that yep. information to him, he knows that the kid probably misses his calorie intake a lot. Mm -hmm. And if he gives him a thousand calorie goal, he's probably factoring in. There's going to be a lot of times he only hits 500 or 700. Totally. Now, if I gave him 500, he would, he would go yeah. you know, 200. Three, yeah. And then I said, then there's another thing that his experience is telling him and he's factoring in also is that as this kid, so his goal is 10 to 15 pounds. Well, as this kid adds two to three to four to five more pounds of muscle, his metabolism is also going to speed up yes. too. Mm -hmm. So this goal of only adding three to 500 calories above his maintenance, well, as soon as he adds two or three more pounds of muscle, two or 300 calories yeah, is no longer above his maintenance. Mm -hmm. And so giving him a lofty goal like a thousand, I said, is most likely going to be a really good place for that particular person. And so I'm glad, I mean, that's exactly what I was telling Andrew was like, yes. yeah, no, I, when Sal said that, I said, I'm pretty sure all of us were on the same page. Like it was that, t that specific. Yeah, no, person. it's a great topic because if you ever hear any good trainer, or if you listen to Mind Pump and you hear us give advice to a specific person on the show. So obviously, you know, we have episodes where people call in live and we're talking to a specific individual. If your scenario is very, very similar to the person you're listening to, our advice can apply towards you. If not, just because you have the same goal, don't listen to the advice necessarily. If we give advice on the show generally, now it becomes more. Well, here you applicable. go. This is exactly yeah. what I said, Andrew. I said, okay, uh, let's let's take the exact same goal. I want to gain ten to fifty pounds, but let's change the person. This person's a beginner, and he's actually overweight. Yeah. But he's heard us say that you know I should build my metabolism up and increase calories, yep. speed my metabolism. I up. would not say you have a thousand. Right, <laughs> and and he says 
I'm a, an endomorph. I put on size. I was a linebacker in high school or something, or I was a lineman in high school, and so I'm kind of a thicker a thicker guy as it is, and weight comes on fairly easy for me. Yep. Uh, but I believe that I should bulk because you guys said that would be good for me for my metabolism. What does the advice look like? I said yeah. he would go the other extreme. I said Sal right. probably get two, just 200, 250. Yep. Barely. Yep. Yeah, yeah, barely over, and just you getting into weight training, your body's going to respond. So, so think of that. Exact same goal. It could be the same age, same goal, Everything, same program he's following, but the nutritional advice is going to be different yeah. based off of yeah. that. that yeah, right there speaking alone. personally, I, as a in my early twenties, even before, especially before as a teenager, but up until my my early to mid twenties, my metabolism was so ridiculous that I, you know, eating a few hundred calories over maintenance did nothing. Mm -hmm. I would have to really eat a lot of food to see anything on the scale move at all. Now, as I get older. Mm -hmm. It started to balance out a little bit more. And I was not the average person. I mean, most of the people around me, you know, if they ate as much as I did, they would gain tons of body fat and tons of weight. So it really depends on the individual and the context of the question and what we're looking to do. But also, I did say in there, if you start to gain too much body fat, right. pull back. So, And I think this highlights the value of a really good trainer or coach. Because the individual variance, a good trainer will always answer a question with it depends and need more information from you. Because I could give the, the same information to somebody with the same goal as someone else may be terrible for them and work for them because the context is completely different and the individual is completely different. So this is a very, uh, it's a very good uh, conversation. It's important for people to understand that. What's the takeaway? Listen to your body, mm -hmm. consider your context, and your context changes. It's such an all important conversation. I've actually, we've been critiqued before on this. So I've actually been in, gone back and forth with somebody in DMs, uh, uh, commenting about, you know, I, you know, I listened to you guys years ago and I heard you say this, and then you, you're contradicting yourself and then you say this. Yeah. It's like, whoa, that's not fair, bro. You can't yeah. cherry pick something I said the four years ago. Completely different, right? And we're talking about a, s a specific yeah, scenario, totally. and then you, just because it's related or it sounds simil similar, similar, yeah. you got to understand that there's there's such an individual variance uh, with with. Well, this is the problem too with like trying to calculate your maintenance or calculate like these these general formulas that are out there. It's a great like base. It's a great like starting point yep. so you can see change. But you know, it's it varies so substantially to the individual that it's like if we just put a blanket statement this is always the amount of calories you need to seek you know we'd be doing everybody a disservice yeah no 100 percent. so it's a very important conversation i'm glad you brought that up. i saw the comments too in youtube a oh, thousand calories over i oh, would gain I so much see, body fat that's what triggered andrew to ask me because yeah. he said but i didn't see it he's just like yeah yeah people are commenting on that i said whenever we see those things you know because unfortunately we don't have a chance to look at everything mm -hmm. right um, when you guys see stuff like that, you know, I always like to address that because it is, it's like, it's so yeah, do, How different would your advice be? Let's say you're talking to the person that's got kind of everything all together. They like to have information. They follow instructions. They're really organized versus the person's like, yeah, none of that works for me. This really stresses me out. Like, you know, my nutrition advice to the organized, like super on top of a person is very different yeah. than to the other, the other person I might say something yeah. like, we're not doing anything to your diet. All I want you to do is add, uh, you know, serving of vegetables to every meal, knowing that that'll, you know, help them eat less and do that kind of stuff. And this person over here, I'm going to get much ninja more. ninja with that person. Well, 100%. The, the, the generic thing to say, you know, to cover like all topics or all goals is that there, we always factor in behavior. And if I know more about somebody, even it's not, it's not just science and math. That's a big part of it. You yep. know, there is science involved. There's math involved. Yep. But then there's also another component. You're which dealing is, with a human. That's right. And 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 a good trainer is saying depends and asking enough questions mm -hmm. so I can start to piece together like, okay, I have an, I've seen this yeah. before. Mm -hmm. This type of person typically does X, Y, and Z. So right. I need to factor that in with my advice. Yeah, who am I talking yeah, to? Yes, yeah. the, the math and science <laughs> says this, but now I have this but other element. tells me they're probably going to be doing this that's because right. of their behaviors. Yeah, that's you know right. what it reminds me of? Uh, we had a, a while ago, we had a, a NFL uh, trainer in here. So this person trains professional athletes. And he was talking about how terrible some of the pre-game diets of some of these athletes are. And he was saying, oh, yeah, you wouldn't even believe like- Dude, athletes are the worst. Well, so he was, no, no, this is a great conversation. Yeah, I remember. He said, no, I got I got athletes, man, that right before a game- we'll Taco eat, Bell or something. Taco that, Bell. He doesn't change it. Fried chicken. They'll yeah. drink a bunch of soda. And it's the same garbage food before every game. And so then I said, wow, you know, I wonder how much their performance would improve 
if you could convince him to have something healthy before and the macros are right. And he, goes, and, he, and he said to me, he goes, no, you're wrong. Yep. He goes, these guys are so mentally set on the fact that their Taco Bell meal that they've had every day before every yeah. game since they were in high school is key to their success. That if I took that out and replaced it with healthy food, it would mess with their it's mental state. It's almost like a superstition, right? Totally. It, it, yeah. And at that point, it's because I have my – Everything it puts them in a, in a mental space that like is is literally something you can count on. Yes, and, like, and so I had the same process. Like I put my cleats on the same way. Nobody <laughs> talked to me. If somebody talked to me, it would ruin my whole experience. And so I would I would come after them after the game. I'd say, "Don't ever talk to me again." You know, as I'm preparing, and this is just and you put the eye black on, and it, everything was all like very ritualistic. And yeah. so I totally get that. Yeah. So it's like if you if you're a another trainer or coach and you see this NFL trainer and you're like, what an idiot. Right. And he's getting he lets his it. athletes eat Taco Bell before a game. Yeah. yeah. It sounds absurd. But you have no idea. Right. right? It's hey, such a good point because yeah. we know we know what the science and the math says that if we gave him certain foods, he would yeah. get this a little bit better, you know, digestion, a little bit better, maybe energy. Like But the mental part but, screwed up. But and, yeah, just this just the fact that it could throw him off his mental game and he doesn't like those things and he really enjoys this. He's getting <laughs> yeah. ready to go do something that he needs to be performing. Mm-hmm. And be great it puts at me in flow state. It's important to put him, yes, in that flow totally. state or that mindset. Totally. What's the black uh, stuff on the eyes? Eye black. Like, what is, is that? It's supposed to like. It's a uh, reflection of the lights. Take the yeah. Off take of the what? sun your out cheeks? of your eyes. I don't understand it. I think so. Yeah. No, no, the, no. It's it's the so both the sun and lights. The way it refracts off of off of your cheekbone makes a difference in the black. I, Does it really? Well, yeah, especially yeah. when you're looking up to like grab, like if you're playing baseball and you're trying to find that pop fly, you know, things like that are like you know catching wow, a ball. Really, it makes a difference, huh? Yeah, yeah. there's a there's yeah. a there's a reason behind doing. Now, I figured. There I mean, be. it's it uh, for me. It was really just like war paint. Yeah. Like well, I just I got in the mindset like, oh, okay, now I'm. Well, let's, let's be honest. I, that's got to play a role too. Like I could, fe- sure. I could see like I, now I'm ready. You know, I got my my eye paint on or whatever. Yeah. It's like smelling salts for powerlifting. Totally. I don't know if it really will contribute to like scientifically speaking. I think it's there's mixed studies. Well, they also slap the hell out of each other yeah. too to just get into that. Like, <laughs> yeah. did you see, did uh, you like, see the the high school basketball one that I just posted? No, uh, you guys didn't see that. No. I just posted my story yesterday. There's a high school basketball kid, and they all, you know, when they, you know, in, in the basketball, they, you know, all the players that aren't starting line up, and then they call the starting lineup. The guy comes through, kind of runs through the little thing, and they all high five each other. Never and the kid at the end, he's, they do their, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then the last part of it, he. Fucking slash me across the <laughs> face. You really just slept. <laughs> just don't see if he was expecting it. Oh, yeah, no, you could tell it's oh, part of their did? ritual. Oh, okay. You could tell that's their thing. They do their thing, and then he just freaking slaps them across the face. I've never seen anybody do that before. Wow, that's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. That, that do you guys ever fun. play any mental games on yourselves when you're working out to get an extra rep or whatever? Do you guys ever do that? Oh, I just, I get extra angry. Yeah. You know, like well, that's my go to. When I was younger, I don't do this anymore because I, I'll hurt myself, but when I was younger, if I was deadlifting and pulling something that was hella heavy, I pictured that I, have to, I had to lift. Like something off, like someone I loved. Like it's my my dad's pinned <laughs> under the car, and I, now You're if I did, die if it's not for me. Yes, now if I did that now, I don't think my body could <laughs> could handle it. I probably oh, hurt yeah. myself. Hilarious. Funny. You want to hear something hilarious? Even no. even funnier. Okay, so I'm gonna read something to you. It sounds like a freaking movie. I can't even believe this crap actually even happens. Okay, ready for this? This is the title. This I'm gonna read the the whole the title of the article. Okay, driver who stopped to help when truck carrying 100 lab monkeys <laughs> crashed in Pennsylvania and put her hand in one of the cages, says she now has a cough and pink eye. The CDC urges oh anyone in contact God. with the macaques to seek medical attention. So <laughs> let's back up for a second. Wait, wait a second. There's 100 macaques. <laughs> one of them gave this lady pink eye. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> what kind this, of disease are we going to come up with here? can't make this shit up. Bro, huh? yeah. what, lab a, monkeys? Hey, what, a t- what a title that is Bro, right there. Lab uh-huh. monkeys escaped, and then she touched one, got sick, and the CDC's like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotta get you these never monkeys. touch macaque, okay, lady? <laughs> it's not something we do. Now, I read some follow-up articles, and they were able to get all the escaped lab monkeys. So they were okay. Yeah, so Planet oh. of the Apes isn't going to happen. Well, I, that bro, totally we, sounds like a movie. We are lit. You know what? Every day that goes by and we get deeper and deeper to this like the, and you made that comment the other day about being in the simulation like it yeah. started doesn't to, it feel like th- that there's a kid uh, playing a game right now pink eye and Ebola like, how, yeah, how, how much have you guys been have you guys been reading or watching at all about you know Elon Musk Neuralink and what it's going to be capable of Dude. and what they're like they've already, know, they've already he mentioned it, it. 
like being something they're going to be able to roll out like fairly soon. And I'm like, I don't know. If there that's are a good they're idea. already doing trials on on monkeys and pigs, and they're putting this and the things that the things that they're going to be supposedly capable of doing like blows my mind. Like the idea that you're going to be able to drive a car, like thinking about going left, going right, do stuff like, like that, read your emails. You know, just by thinking about it, you know, and be able to do things like that. So they're to recall li- memories. Like, so you have to get surgery to get it in. Yes, it's implanted into the brain. So is it almost it like like right like back here, right right back here? I think is where I've seen the the implant. It looks like it's got like this three prong thing, and these are the different okay. functions that it's. Supposed so to I do. just picture you guys seen Short Circuit, right? Yeah. Okay, so Johnny Five, he just takes a book like an almanac and just like and reads the whole thing. But, I mean, wouldn't you think that you could, at that point, if you can recall memories or recall, like, sight of what you, you you know, you went through, almost like Black Mirror, you'd be able to retain all of that just by, like... Looking at it. Looking at it. I, there's a... Okay, there's a very... First of all, there are strange disorders where people do have memories like that, where they don't forget anything. And the fuck are you talking about? You're one of those guys. No, 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 no. I don't, <laughs> he's not the, like this. He's the strange, fitness study. I've like, heard this stuff. What are you talking about? You, oh, we dude. all read sometimes the exact same study. Like, I tell you Literally just time. like fitness studies. Like, yeah. I don't know how you do it. And yeah. and then we get on the podcast and you somehow have the ability to regurgitate like the exact verb. That's different. That's different. Oh, okay. Yeah, Let's no. Explain what, to me no, how no, There are people, so there's people that they're, they have these strange memories where they could literally tell you every single license oh, like, plate they've ever seen. All right, or details of like, Detail, crazy or, oh, that person over in this corner was wearing a red hat and these sneakers. Or they'll or remember- isn't like, like, sometimes they'll go get uh, hypnotized to be able to then, you know, kind of walk through that whole experience. Again. Yeah, that's different. But I'm talking, there's there's really, there's, I don't know what it's called, but there are people who have this strange ability where they could tell you the name of every person they've ever met in their entire life. Now, here's the catch. They typically have some kind of, Psychological dysfunction. They're weird as fuck. There's a reason why your Do brain they get hit in the head too, like some traumatic. Ex- it's it's it is it is very important that your your brain forgets stuff. So this it's, is an okay. important thing. So this is does. actually okay. one of the things that they're concerned about with this is that we don't know what that could potentially cause. Exactly. We think it's going to be this great, right? Theoretically, like wow, how cool would that be to be able to recall a memory when you were eight, like vividly? We've had a few could, people's heads explode. But what we don't know <laughs> is the unintended consequences right. of that. Like maybe there was a reason why our brain lets that stuff go, and maybe it would be very traumatic if we can, if we can hang on or we have access to all these well, memories I'll, I'll so g- vividly. Yes, yeah, so I'll give you an, I'll give you an example, right? It, uh, challenge and struggle is intricately tied to meaning and purpose in life. This mm-hmm. is a fact. We know this. Mm-hmm. Yet we're constantly trying to eliminate all struggle and conflict and challenge in our lives. And we're seeing this now with mm-hmm. exploding anxiety and depression. And I don't even have to argue this. We're way better off today than we were, you know, 500 years ago, right? Why do we keep seeing these explosions? Why are people seeking out challenges, trying to fix things or whatever? Dude. So we just don't know a lot of stuff. And I can't imagine what that might do. There, I, there's so much of this that's like really just the unknown in terms of like yeah. also like eliminating your instinctual behaviors. Like if you start relying on, uh, you know, some kind of artificial um, like computer to analyze everything for you, you know, it's like almost like you're being dependent on. Yeah. So I don't know. Okay. So you have, you have you have two like you have the, the, the thinking fast, thinking slow part of your brain, right? Yeah. You, that you access. So I would think that this would be on the logical side, the long process thinking where you would have to stop, really think about something and go, oh, where I've read this or I know this, let me think about it. But you'll still have your animal instinct first brain that will always fire. Like that will, you'll always have your initial animalistic reaction to things and behaviors. I don't think that will hijack that. Lizard brain. I think that when you go to the other part and you go, you think logically, let me process this. Now you'll have, that's my theory on that's how it'll work. So I don't know if it'll eliminate. I don't. I don't your, think your anybody natural knows. instincts. Huh? I don't no, think anybody knows. Well, yeah, we're, no. We're, I mean, we're we're, 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 we're all speculating yeah. right right now. Yeah. I mean, how about how about it, it works amazing and it's perfect, but the uh, you know you and you get started getting hundreds, thousands of people that have these neural links, and then the business goes under. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh. <laughs> I just always worried about how getting hijacked. That, you know, shit, no one's asking that Canada. question. Just, how yeah. shitty is that, and, right? And how Elon Musk dies, or yeah. Elon Musk says, "Fuck this! I'm so tired of all this scrutiny. Fuck everybody! I'm selling the company. I'm out." Dude, Russia or China hacks into, into your brain, <laughs> or, or, or how successful are ads going to be? You know, we're like talking over here. I'm like, uh, damn, yeah. I want yeah, a yeah. diet coke so bad right now. Yeah. Like that's weird. You never drink them. I know, but I want one so bad. Who knows? And who's signing up for this elective brain surgery? There's That's what I want. Crazy people that will do just. Well, that. didn't he say that? Um, what, what were some of the conditions that they they think that they're, they're going to be able to eliminate? Like, yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, people that like paralyzed. paralyzed or, yeah, issues. Ad, yes. And, yeah, memory stuff like somebody who can't who has yeah, short term dementia. Or, yeah, or, yeah, there yeah. Was some things like that that he said that he'd be able to eliminate in a few years. Yeah, you know what's funny to me it's like, is what? like the same because Elon Musk is such a polarizing, uh, you know, kind of interesting individual, right? So the same people. That are like, damn, Facebook and Google is spying on me. Oh, I hate them, you know. And then mm -hmm. Elon Musk, like, I'll put a computer chip right in your brain. I'll, <laughs> I'll sign up for that. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's going uh, do you on? think it's so? Like, you I think they're all the same people. Uh, I think the people that would be open to that are the same people that don't give a fuck about the Facebook. I think there's the, the, the people that are worried about Facebook are worried about all this invasive stuff. I you, think know, you know what Elon has said is he said, this is all going to happen anyway. I'm just trying to do it before anybody else because I know I'm not going to create well, some weird. He's like, it's already an appendage of yours anyway your phone yeah you know my that's well, what got me might as well put it in your brain that's what got me <laughs> that's a big like, step dude. uh i don't know it I is but I'll it wait. isn't like so that when he said that on joe rogan that was kind of like one of those <laughs> moments for me where i'm like yeah. god you're right like how many and let's be honest okay everybody being honest in this room how many think for a moment the the feeling of stress or anxiety when you started to take off from your house and realized you left your phone. Yeah, of course. And I, do you yeah. not 100% of the time turn the car back around and go oh, get yeah. your phone? No, that As if you can't recently. go a day yeah. without your phone being at home. I, I don't even know my wife's phone number. <laughs> no. I started sweating, dude. So, and like, uh, it, it took me a good hour or so to realize I'm going to be okay. Like, like So you're, fine. you're lying to yourself if you do not think it's already an appendage. Yeah, I mean, no, that's it, true. It has yeah. already become that, like... And some obviously more dependent than others, but so that was kind of the moment for me where I was like, "Well, fuck, he's kind of right." Like, so all I'm really doing is speeding up the process. There's just a lot of weird unknowns. Like, well, did you course, know that? Yes, yes, yeah, I agree. I don't did disagree you know with that you. you can... But uh, from that, from that logic, think about that. All I'm really saying is that, like, okay, I could implant something that allows to, to, to takes out the holding something and actually typing it in to get to the what I want. Now I just gotta think it. I mean, is it really if? Is safe if there are no unintended consequences that happen, which I agree with you that, that we don't yeah. know, and we also all that turn to cyborgs. I mean, is it really that different from that? It's just weird, dude. There's this. Uh, there was a one uh, electronic brain implant that they I did. I believe they did experiment with where you could push a button and orgasm. Like, like you know, think about it. Uh, antidepressants out the window. Oh, you feel sad? Hit the button. You'll feel happy no matter what. So now people are going to be like at in at home, isolated by themselves, and hitting the button. Oh, I feel good. Uh, I mean, is and, that how much like, different is that from the, the opioid crisis that we have right now? Because theoretically, if it directly goes to the brain, there's no like drugs have their side effects, and they, you know, you got to take more. I mean, who knows, right? Huh. It, it, and that's the here's okay. Here's a good one. A good question: Are there no unintended consequences? Okay, opiates, they have, you know, we know physical, physiological, unattended consequence. But let's just imagine opiates always made you feel happy when you took a pill mm. and there were none of those. Does that still mean there are no side effects? I don't think so. I think easily feeling happy all the time has its own side effects because you don't have all of the processes well, yeah, that or you also know. depending on something yeah. else to do it you versus think that's the only means to get there right you're depending on a, a some other function versus intrinsically being able to do it which there's obviously tremendous value in you being able to create that for yourself versus oh i depend on this pill or oh i depend on this you know like electronic surge Dude, that i, I wonder if there's going to be an explosion in amish people when all this happens you know what I mean? They're like, we were right. Look at all you weirdos over there. We're over here with the horses and buggies. All you know? the rest of us cyborg zombies you yeah, know, trying dude. to make this thing work. Dude, I'll just, tell you what, though. If I had Neuralink and I could just implant them in all these like high school kids' brains and like just tell them exactly what to do, you know, just like this, it'd be way easier. Yeah, you'd win every game. Yeah, yeah, you'd be like yeah, playing yeah, Madden. They'd be huge. They'd be jacked. Like they'd be doing everything what, right. You'd, you'd hook the, them up to an app like you're playing Madden and they're just playing like that. Oh, you go over here. make a, of, all yeah. the, of all the things Here's that the you're playbook. trying to of all the things that you're trying to coach them or train them to do, like consistently, some of that, what do you find is the, the biggest hurdle or what do you find yourself repeating the most? Well, a lot of it is an intent. 
So um, I think, uh, you know, just with younger groups in general, it's just about getting through it. And it's about um, performing whatever it's because right now I'm in the thick of the exercise portion of it and then the workouts and then also the nutrition. Um, And I'm actually, I guess, actually, I I scratched that. It's probably nutrition is probably the hardest Uh, just because I think that um, you it's just hard to kind of break through if they're not seeking it out, you know, for me to just like, you know, inundate them with like good strategies and all these things to do. I'm like, I don't really know what you guys are doing. Like until you show me uh, and write down like what you're eating, what your family prepares you. They're just like, they're just almost like they're okay. What's for dinner? And yeah. you know, and they're just mindless about like their eating. You know what's right fun? Okay, now. so when I was a kid, my I was I think I was fifteen, and my parents went to Italy for a full month. And within that month, uh, my I stayed at my grandma's house, and my grandma, old school Sicilian, and she's the kind of person where if she if she'll say, "What do you want to eat?" and if I tell her, she'll just make it. It didn't be anything. I could tell her whatever. She'll make it, and then if I like it, she'll make it all the time. So at 15, I was already lifting weights, trying to work out, and I'm already taking supplements, doing the whole thing. And I told her, I said, no, no, I like steak. Can you make me steak? Yep. So I had steak, breakfast, lunch, dinner, <laughs> snacks. She'd throw pasta on it. In a month- Grandma gained, gains, right? Dude, yeah, in a month, I gained like eight yeah. pounds, and I got so strong, and I pieced together like, I got to eat more meat. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like- this is like one of the big. You know deals. that didn't that did not come to me until yeah. way later. Like oh, I, I wish I would have pieced that part together. Like I was just giving advice to someone like that. Dude, my sister actually, we were talking about this. Like who's starting her kind of journey right now? I'm like, just start with hitting your protein intake. You'll see that when I tell you about what you should be eating, you'll go, oh yeah, yeah. Or people always go like, oh yeah, I eat a lot of that. You know, and I'm like, yeah. Well, watch when you actually track and pay attention like you'll see that yeah. you miss that so, like i have to when i'm in like competitive mode or change my physique mode i have to actively seek a, like meat or protein in every it's single not meal. it takes a lot of prep too yeah and that's the, I, I remember vividly when i was going through it as a high school kid like you know my parents would always be like oh my god you eat so much like the, you eat so much meat like yeah. it was just something i was always asking them if i could get you know and i just like chicken breast ever chicken breast you know steak as much as i could get it uh but it was just like they like, oh my god you're racking our bills up yeah. you know cuz it's just it too it's expensive like in terms of like if you're just always seeking out steaks and, and, you know, quality meats. Yep. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that was one of the things. So I, I, I actually created this, um, this manual for, for the kids, which I'm going to hand them off with like, you know, options and just things and strategies for Bro, seeking out your protein. Box all day so long, all day long for those. I kids. put, I put that on there cause it, it was like, it's so helpful to, to know that you have like a freezer full of meat. Uh, you can prepare that like on a Sunday. You can cook all these things and then you have that to go to. So you're not like uh, at a loss during the day. Like, how am I going to get uh, this protein? Because because if you're already behind the eight ball at that point. Yeah, well, also, here's another advantage. Typically with these kids, it's mom or dad that does the grocery shopping. Yep. If they sign up for Butcher Box, they do it with their mom or dad. It's on a schedule. Once a month, there's a box of you know good quality grass-fed meat that comes to the door, and they know this is what I'm eating. This is how I'm going to get my grams of protein, and mm-hmm. then they can go and prepare it and prep it, and they're all set. You know, I, when I was a kid, before I uh, before I understood that, I thought a bologna and cheese sandwich was yeah. protein. Yeah. Oh, there's bologna and cheese. Oh, I know because you get a little bologna. Yeah, five I, grams. I remember as a kid. So before I was like really into tracking food, I would count my Togo sandwich every day as like a, a high protein meal. Yeah, because there's yeah. meat in there. Yeah, well, and I was getting a huge, you large count my one. fried chicken strips. And and I, you know, a lot of people have to think the same way too. Oh, big old meat sandwich. And what you don't realize is those things have like four ounces of yeah, meat. <laughs> like seriously, it's like twenty grams of protein in and, this and massive a pound of sandwich. Bread. Yeah, and then but <laughs> yeah. you consume twelve hundred calories of of carbohydrates and fats. Like. Yeah. I was so off on all that stuff. I, I after I figured that out, I began looking at meals like, oh my god, no, I need to get this much meat in no, this meal. I, now that I think totally. about it, butcher box is perfect for these kids because when they get it, it's it it's weighed so they know this is a one and a half pound tri tip. Yep. Okay, Johnny, this is your tri tip. You cook it, or your mom cooks, or your dad, whatever. Get it ready. You know it's a pound and a half. This is what you're gonna eat over the next three days. So now you've got it all portioned out for you, and it's all set. It's grass fed, so it's you know better fatty acid profile. Yeah, are are any of you guys paying attention? Involved. If any of our brand, of our partners like this, are they being affected by inflation right now? Because okay. almost everybody is raising prices. on No, everything. you know this is a great. So that's great. Yeah, so, especially food. yes, because we work with a few subscription companies like Public Goods, right? So yeah. for people that know Public Goods, 
they have like home goods, cleaning supplies, dog food, canned foods, toothpaste, that kind of stuff. Stuff yeah. you would use in your house. Yeah. And their big claim to fame is, uh, you know, no harsh chemicals and it's very earth friendly. So the packaging is good. They don't, you know, create a lot of waste. They have a very small, if any, carbon footprint. I believe they're carbon neutral, if I'm not mistaken. They have that reusable model where you buy your first thing like that yes. and then you just get the refills but on everything. But here's what I think the brilliance is in subscription models, period, including ButcherBox and companies like Public Goods, is that because they don't have as many middlemen, inflation, when you have inflation happen, it affects the the first the source, then the, then the, then the person Well, it affects everybody. Them. And if yes, you have six steps in between and other, you yeah, and yeah. The, the customer, everybody putting in half a percent more on their, All their added step up. adds up. And- yes, because the middleman makes money. This person makes money. And that's just how it works. When you have a subscription service, you are taking out a lot of that. So although inflation probably affects everything, you're less likely to have an issue. And when subscription services raise their price, they really have to consider the consequences because it's a subscription. It's not like a one-time purchase. They know we're raising these person, this person's box by right. 20 bucks or whatever. Right. Let's really figure out how to do this. So I think subscription services in this inflationary market I think they're like an incredible hedge against inflation. Direct to consumer. Yeah, yes. direct to, yeah, when it's direct to consumer, yes. that makes sense. Yes, yes, no, yes. I see that too. I think that makes uh, you know one of the biggest differences. All right, uh, I got some cool studies to share with you guys here real quick. All right. Number one, alcohol, any amount of alcohol increases your risk of cancer. So I know that there's a myth out what? there- that and we'll cover this. Right? What about gin? I've heard like so many people try to say like a shot of gin uh, extends their life. Yeah. this is like a whole thing. Okay, so so can alcohol or other substances similar to alcohol in- increase your longevity? Yes, but not because it's good for your physical or physiological body. If it's you know, bonding with other person, there's oh, there's those benefits as well. So let's cut those out for a second. Let's just talk about purely about the physical and physiological effects. No, uh, in that context, alcohol always increases your risk of dying early. There is no even all the stuff that's around wine and antioxidants. That's so bullshit. I know it is. Yeah. I know. I know. If you're really chasing antioxidants, go have a fucking handful of berries, and yeah. you'll get twice as much <laughs> yeah, as you yeah, get yeah, from your wine. So I know yeah, it's yeah. a bullshit thing. But Drink a glass of grape juice. Then, right. Right. Yeah. Like I mean, I know. I know that. It, but. It is true you're getting antioxidants in yeah. it, and you, you can what, try and tie that to some benefits, right? Or, yeah, you know what they do is they'll have a study that says like compound found in chocolate shown to increase you know f- uh, fatty acid mobilization, or compound found in red wine, right. you know, increase the longevity it's of mice. Super concentrated in like in pill form. It's yeah. not in the nice yeah. you know like like edible form. And for the no. one positive thing, it doesn't it doesn't cancel the nine negative things. No, and it's also right. the compound, and it's also look at the study, and no, it doesn't like chocolate. Okay, for the most part, chocolate's not great. I mean, well, I guess you could fit it into your your diet, but. Uh, that, all this stuff is hilarious. It's all clickbaity so stuff. So is this like, I mean, what kind of cancers does this promote? Did all. they Just all. Yeah, there's, it, it increases it, your risk of all cancers. Sort of In like per- an epigenetic, uh, it unlocks sort yeah. of the potential yeah. for it. <laughs> just just <Fuck>. stressed out. <laughs> like, like, listen, you guys. Ah, yeah. It's like, I like it. it, is, know, it now, is it is it something that is actually in the alcohol, or is it that? Because I always want to be careful. That's a it's a it's a causation, not a correlation thing. Is it, or is it that people who drink alcohol tend to overconsume on calories? Therefore, in the context of overeating calories and drinking alcohol, pretty much feeds and leads all yeah, no, they cancer. Because then can, that would make sense. They control for all that. It's okay. the alcohol. Yeah, it's the alcohol wow. itself. So even without the high calories. But it, if you moderately, if you don't drink a lot, it's a very moderate increase in risk. But it's not a decrease in risk, like some people say, yeah. and it's definitely not a flat. Right. So there's well, always an increase. I know, like in ancient times, okay, it uh, saved a lot more lives because water was actually the problem. D- did you know that? Yeah. Did you know that? So yeah. workers fermented beer and, and because and it wine didn't have way safer. Yeah. So back in the like, we were talking like hundreds or thousands of years ago. Mm-hmm. It was safer to drink beer because you're less likely to get a an illness from yeah, dirty parasites water. Parasites or anything else. Yeah, yeah, or bacteria. So it's like, here, you want some water? Like, hell no, I'll have the beer that yeah. I know is clean <laughs> and get a little drunk in the process. When did we figure out beer? Do you know when that when that came? When, oh, we, when did alcohol, like, how far back does Since alcohol go? Thousands, thousands and thousands of years, yeah. dude. Fermented, uh, like, fruit and stuff. And was it wine first or did did beer come before wine? Do we know any of this? Ooh, what's older, beer I don't or know, wine? I because, I mean, you use I mean, grains. Wine's in the Bible, right? So does, was is beer in the Bible? 
Wouldn't that be? Uh, God, yeah. imagine how weird that would be. Like if Jesus I feel like water e- Egyptians beer. made a kind of a, a beer. <laughs> Jack Daniels. Well, there's also <laughs> mead too with uh, with honey, which was uh, popular amongst like, Dude, the monks. Do you know they make alcohol in prison? Do you have you heard about yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. It's called um, what's it called? There's a name for it, Doug. I know you've yeah. been, <laughs> I know never you've been, been there. Hey, Doug, when you serve time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's wow, called we, something. We saw the shit called? Made. Hold, hold on. This it, is crazy. Look at this. Chemical analysis recently confirmed that the earliest alcoholic beverages in the world was a mixed fermented drink of rice, honey, and hawthorn fruit and or grape. Oh, so it's the residues of, of the it. beverage dated 7,000 to 6,600 BCE. Wow. Wow. Dang. From, where's this? This is a Neolithic village in the Yellow really River Valley. I have no is idea where that, that is. Asia somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Where is that? Yeah, the Yellow River is in China, I believe. China. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's, what God, is, they did a lot of shit. What is the E ago. on BCE? I know BC is before uh, Christ, but what's E? Mm. I have before no idea. Christ. Before Christ. Existed? Existed? I don't know. <laughs> good, good one. Uh, I've just I'll never. It I, it's always been AD or BC. I've never seen BCE. What's before that mean? Before Christ, Earth. Is that is that oh. is BC before or BCE before BC? Yeah. How far back are we going? Yeah. Okay, BCE Big stands for energy. before the common or current era. That's interesting. Oh, I always thought BC was. Oh, is this going to be like a political? Yeah, yeah it oh is. Oh my <laughs> god, bro. it sounds like it. Oh my god, is that yeah. really what this is? Did they change BC to BCE? Okay, to be the, yes, fucking- exactly. Oh. So, simply put, BCE before Common Era is a secular oh. version of BC before Christ. Oh, do we have to be so. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, we're going to change everything. everything. Did, I, did you guys know that? I didn't even know that. I'm like, no, BCE? I, what is no. BCE? Listen, guys, yeah. happy holidays, okay? Listen. We don't want to talk too much about it. <laughs> <laughs> and to go back to your other question on the prison wine, it's called Pruno. It's yes, an alcoholic bit liquid made from Pruno? apples, oranges, fruit. Cocktail, they put it like ketchup, in a dirty sugar, sock for bread. They fermented in a toilet, in a toilet, bro, in a yeah. plastic bag. No, they, seriously, they, they, dirty, they do like a dirty sock, Gross. and they, they smash it between the mattress and stuff for a little. Oh, long. is it the mattress? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. Yes. And then they keister it. And so, whoa. You know. whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> I think we're taking I'm this just saying, they, they don't You got suckered into drinking that stuff. Take it. <laughs> Speaking of, you, you gotta know what, get crafty in there. Keister wine. Do you know what a fifi is? Have you heard of that in prison? No, no, you don't know that. <laughs> what is that? What's so, a fifi? It's, 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 so this is. <laughs> I had a so I had a trainer that worked I for me. Like I know this, and I don't know why. I had a trainer that worked for me that <laughs> he was he came out of he he was a ex, you know got out of prison whatever I hired him, great guy loved him to death um and you know he really wanted to turn his life around and I would ask him about like like what was it like dude to be in prison this and that and he would tell me about like workouts and this and that and then he told me what a fifi was so a fifi I think I'm saying it right they would get a, a latex glove. And they would cut, I guess, one of the fingers off, and then oh use my like God. it's like a it's, they use like towels like and a stuff around it. Uh, flashlight, flashlight. Yeah, so yeah. it's like a, they would use it, and they would they would bang it. They would have sex with the fifi, and he's like, oh yeah, you could trade this for X amount of cigarettes or whatever. Wow, in prison. I so know. it's a it's it's a glove. It's like pass, a finger of a glove. Around. Got it. They would wrap like towels or something around it, and make it real tight, and then they'd use some kind of wow. lubricant. I know. And then they wow. have. And isn't that great? I know. I feel like it, that's, that's, I'm telling you, dude. You put a you lock up a bunch of people in there. Give yeah. them nothing to do, man. Yeah, the ingenuity is. I swear to God, dude. You see the way they communicate and the shit yeah, that they yeah, make, yeah, yeah, yeah. the tattoo guns that they make out of yeah. like a like out of a, what is it like a tape recorder and just weird. It is a great stuff. example of yeah. like, man, if you you don't even need that much resources if you really give give the human like just space, mm-hmm. the space, no to just, nothing to do. Yeah, exactly, yeah. nothing to do but think like. How powerful that well, could be. Well, that's why it's know? so hilarious to me. Like uh, that one show I love, Ancient Aliens. They always like they they totally dismiss like human ingenuity, and they're just like aliens taught them how to do this. Yeah, dude. He's like, get the fuck out of bro, here, bro. If you're if you lived ten thousand or twenty or hundred thousand years ago, and you ain't got nothing to do, you're laying back on your back. Yeah, you're gonna figure out <laughs> gonna the constellations and the exactly. stars. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're gonna figure that shit you're out. You're gonna well, pick up on some patterns. Yeah, I mean, now, if guys in prison can make a flashlight out of a, a glove, then now, you can do that. Knowing your personalities, if you guys 100%. got sent to prison, oh my god, okay, yeah. five to ten years, let's say, yeah, are you the type that goes in and you're like, you get super educated and jacked coming out or do you like fuck it? This Definitely. is vacation. You put your feet up. Which one are vacation? you? Doing? Well, vacation. Well, terrible. Vacation. Well, I mean, Bro, I'm always on, course, on point. Like I'm looking around, you know, I'm 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 tightening, I'm tight butthole. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I would, I would isolate myself and com- and probably come out 
like educated, probably like a knockout a degree or something. Right? Something. I would just focus on something to keep myself from going crazy. I'd probably yeah. learn like some kind of uh, like wood carving skill yeah. or a something. Yeah. Adam yeah. would probably be a gang leader. I'd play oh, probably yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I'd be probably, <laughs> and I'd be playing hearts. Like we'd be playing a lot of cards. Uh, we'd be playing a lot of cards. Yeah. Organizing. Good. Organizing all the, the, the clans. Adam's yeah. tenure yeah. sentence turns into yeah. life, yeah. you know? Yeah. Sun tanning with the gangs, uh, you know, out in the yard. Yeah. 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 They wouldn't know where to throw you, though. Yeah. White dudes and the Hispanic dudes. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'd run them both. That's why. I'd be the first person. Oh, yeah. I'd be the first person combine to do that. Them. Oh, my. Combine our forces. That's right. Guys. We're going to run this the MS 13 yeah. and the other. Run yeah. the yeah. ultimate, <laughs> ultimate gang. Yeah. Let's, oh, not wow. sing, let's not get you there. Yeah, I don't. I don't want you to do that. Hey, real quick, you got to check out one of our favorite sponsors, Ned. They make full spectrum hemp oil extract products. Now, they have one for sleep, and it really does knock you out. They have one for normal daily use, makes you feel good, anti inflammatory. Uh, it feels great. It's a high CBD but full spectrum product. So, a lot of times, there's CBD products, you take them, you don't feel anything, you will feel Ned. They also have a non cannabinoid product called Mellow. This is a magnesium-based product with some GABA, very relaxing. This is great to be used daily. Anyway, it's the best hemp oil products you'll get anywhere. We've worked with a lot of them. This one, by far, is the best. So you got to go check them out. Head over to mindpumppartners.com. Click on Ned, then use the code MINDPUMP for 15% off. All right, here's the rest of the show. Our first caller is Joe from New Jersey. What's up, Joe? How can we help you? Hey, what's up? What's up? Um, cool. So I was wondering, what are your thoughts on NMN? Um, like, do you guys take that? Uh, have you taken it? Is it worth it? Okay. Um, what is that a sex toy? What is that? that. What, what is it? What, what are you is talking that? about? It's like BDSM, except it's a That's what I say. Is it an acronym they for take the, out the bondage a, part? A, a sexual move? What is that? Uh, Nicotinamide mononucleotide? Is that how you say it? Yeah, you got so it. So help, help me with, okay, where did you hear about this? In, uh, well, I got another question first I want to ask you, Joe. Joe, how, how long have you been consistently, like no breaks, been training? And what does your workout look like? Let's start with that first. Um, so I'm 41. I guess I've been like, active and training since i was like 20 good deal so super consistent you would say yeah i do everything i'm not i'm not i don't go to the gym but i i do run a lot i i lift weights i do like calisthenics push-ups pull-ups awesome and then, um, and then nutrition wise what does that look like what does your diet look like how many grams of proteins carbs and fats are you eating um i don't really pay attention to that i'm uh i'm actually a student of ayurveda uh oh, good deal. so I just eat, I eat really well. Um, okay. But protein, maybe like, uh, maybe 60 grams a day, maybe. Mm. Okay. And, and what is your, how many hours of sleep do you have every night? Do you have a sleep routine before you go to sleep? Uh, no sleep routine. I just pass out at like, uh, like 10 o'clock. I wake up at like 530. Yeah. Okay. So I, I don't think you should waste your money on any of these supplements that uh, like, for example, what you're talking about, I mean, there's some studies that show it, might, it does this, that. I, I mean, is it going to move the needle? No. I'll tell you what will move the needle, Joe. Start paying attention to your grams of proteins, fats, and carbs. Um, I would look at your workout. Well, I would definitely pay attention to sleep. But, you know, supplements like this, kind of, look, and by the way, this is coming from a supplement. Like, I'm a, I'm a, a I will admit, huge junkie. fanboy. I'm junkie. a junkie when it comes to supplements. <laughs> I try everything, I use everything. But when I step outside of myself and my, you know, my my addiction to these things, I mean, it, it's not gonna do it's not gonna do anything for you. Like, you know, you're eating 60 grams of protein a day. I bet if you bumped that a little bit, you'd probably. I know you would see better results than what you're seeing now, or what you're seeing what you would see from supplementing with uh, with NMM. I don't remember the acronym, but you know, uh, nicotinamide. Mononucleotide. Mononucleotide. There you go. Yeah. I had it written up there. I know that's a precursor to NAD. Um, and yeah. I know, yeah. And I, I've heard all the all the fuss about it. Uh, you know, shows that it. Well, listen. NAD. There, there's a company that tried to pay us to to advertise for NAD, and none, none of us were impressed with the no. the research around it as far as the the real benefits. But here's the thing. Well, that's you, why. That's why I wanted to ask you guys because there's just so much information out there, and it's all it's all yeah. confusing. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, here, and here's the thing. With I mean, for me, the 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 way I kind of look at it, tease it out. Uh, I mean, Sal's right. If you're if you're not tracking sleep, you're not tracking your macros. I mean, you're gonna get 
you're going to see more gains in in whatever you're pursuing just by by simply doing that. There's the other side too. Uh, you're 41 years old. You're probably pretty established. If you got a decent income and you can burn, you know, a few hundred bucks a month, and it ain't a big deal. Uh, and so long as all the research is pointing that it's not harmful or dangerous, then fuck it, play with it. I don't care. You know, that's kind of how I would yeah. I would treat it. But I, I, the, I, when we address supplements on here, there, there's always so many other things that that somebody who's looking for the competitive edge or wants more from their workouts. There's so many other things that we can do that doesn't require you spending any money that will give you way more return than anything that's on the market, minus you know illegal drugs, right? Yeah. So obviously, well, even drugs. You put someone on anabolic steroids with a shitty diet. Yeah, you're right. That's fair. Get bad training, and they're not going to do as well as someone with good diet, good training who's natural, and that's anabolic steroids. You know, and, and here's the other thing too to pay attention with studies. Look, you 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 practice Ayurvedic medicine. I'm probably preaching to the choir right now, but on a on a you know we could on a physiological level we could say. Wow, increases antioxidant, uh, you know, activity and mitochondrial function. Okay, but what does that mean? Because there's, there's yeah. so complex. There's so many downstream and upstream things that get affected when you change something. So I can I can say to some, I can look at a test and say, wow, uh, protein synthesis went up, right? But what does that necessarily mean? It could it mean we're building more muscle? We don't know yet. It could mean. Uh, it could mean a lot of different things. It could mean more inflammation, depending on the context of the of the individual. So, in, in NAD, you know, and its precursors, there's studies, but it's not. Look, I'll tell you what: if you want to improve mitochondrial function, which is one of the main selling points, supplement with creatine. Creatine is thousands and thousands of studies have been done on it over the over the past few decades. It's very well studied. Some of these other compounds, not so much, and many of the studies that they have are done on animals, and very few are done on humans. Um, not saying it's dangerous, probably not, but uh, it's it's kind of a waste of time unless you're admittedly like me, where you're just like, this is fun. I like to mess with things, in which case mm -hmm. it's a go yeah. for it and kind of see what happens. But if I'm coaching you, if I'm training you, you know, I'm if you're perfect in everything, that's when I'll say, all right, let's have some fun. If you're not perfect in everything, I'll say, well, let's focus on this other stuff first because you're going to get way more out of you know, changing these things than just, you know, been taking this, this supplement. I'm out just because it's like, I have to say, I'm having fun with NADs. I'm done. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> yeah. just, it's, Justin, it's done. Justin takes NADs all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Get so those that, NADs out my mouth. That's pretty much it. So now I, I want to give you something because I know we kind of hammered you a little bit. Uh, it sounds like your, your fitness goals are overall fitness and performance. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Do you I was any, just curious about it. Yeah, I, I actually started taking creatine because of you guys. So that's the that's the the one supplement I think that'll make I definitely will kick the crap out of and uh, NMM uh, in terms of uh, you know mitochondrial function and performance. Do you have Maps Performance? Because I think that would be a good program for someone like you. No, but I'll check it out. We'll give it to you. We'll send that to you, Joe. Ah, oh, sweet. No problem, yep. Joe. All right, man. Thanks for calling in. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, dude, the supplement industry has really done a number on people. <laughs> I knew, where, I knew right where you're going. <laughs> you knew, right? Almost, yeah, right where you start asking them. It's so sunlight. Uh, it's so true. Outside. And I know we, I, I know, I could have gone down a list of like fifteen. Yeah. And I know some people that like drop in that haven't listened to the the all of the podcasts and stuff like that would be like, oh, well, you guys are sponsored by supplements, and you talk about supplements. It's like, yeah, yeah. but in the context of. If you're doing this, then okay here. Or if you're missing these things, then this makes sense. Like, yeah. not like you should take this to build muscle or this is the best mm. thing for burning body fat or this is, you know, it's like there's so many other boxes yeah. that you can check first before you go try some new supplement that's on the market right now that everybody is touting as the next best thing for whatever, you know? Everybody thinks they're eating well till they start tracking it. Yeah, yeah that that's too. Just, that's a big factor that i've always found with people that are really interested in supplements it's always like looking for that like last bit of edge yes. when they haven't really um you know done the work part of of you they're know, looking for the shortcut yeah it they're is. looking for the shortcut they're it, looking for something that is going to give that type of return that you're talking about but they don't want to do that work and it's like listen if you really want to see some benefits man let me tell you you know track track your food and dial in your sleep routine and I, I, there's nothing on the market that I could give it's you. Move you much further. There yeah, ain't nothing. And, and again, we, the, the 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 so the functions of the human body are so complex. We 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 know some of it. We know we know the tip of the iceberg. We don't know majority of how things interact with you because there's so many things that are influenced by other things that we could change one thing and measure that and say it's good and not realize this is why so many pharmaceutical drugs get pulled off the market because. It does its targeted thing, and we find out later, oh, shit, it increases risk of stroke or looks like this might make Alzheimer's uh, more pre prevalent. So 
We have to pay. Look, I'll give you an example, right? mTOR. We measure mTOR, and when mTOR goes up, you build more muscle. If mTOR goes up in a pro-cancer environment, you get a higher risk of cancer. In a healthy environment, you just build more muscle. Does that mean mTOR causes cancer? No. Does that mean mTOR is always good to have up? No. It depends on the context. It's very, very complicated. And so that's why when we look at studies and we're like, oh, this supplement increases antioxidant capacity or, or, or you know, activity, or this one does, you know, it reduces markers of stress. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean, you know, ibuprofen reduces markers of inflammation very effectively. Take ibuprofen all the time, you'll notice your joints will start to break down and you'll start to get problems because you need those markers, right? So it's very complicated and a lot of these supplements sell their products based off these studies that are very narrow and they're almost all very narrow. We want to look at the whole picture and have some length of time with people using. That's why I use creatine. Creatine's been you know, decades and it's been studied so many times, thousands of studies, peer reviewed, that we're we're pretty sure we know what it does. Well, especially a supplement like this. Like this would fall I'm assuming this I don't know anything really about it, but I'm assuming that it falls under the performance category. Yeah, people are like that the biohacking right now that that whole community uses stuff like this. So Right, but I mean it's 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 more based off of, of enhancing performance. It's not a supplement cuz most people are are not getting whatever it is in their body and they need this. It's sold as uh, slows down the aging process, mm. uh, reduces the negative effects of aging, may increase um, your your overall health and longevity may improve endurance. There was one study that showed a, an improvement in endurance with some athletes, um, but that's how they're selling it, right? So, and I've like I've messed with everything, and I've taken this. Uh, we all did for a while. I didn't notice anything, mm. and that's happened a lot to me. It doesn't mean it doesn't work, by the way. That's just me. Um, but man, you you got to look. At, you're trying to make your car go faster. Like, stop putting stickers on it and a spoiler. Like, it's the engine. Let's focus on that first, and then let's move down the line of the most important things. Like, your four-cylinder, you know, gas-efficient car, and you're trying to slap a spoiler on it to make it have better performance. You're wasting your money and your time. Well, that's why I was asking that, because the next step, you, after you track, after you do think big rocks like sleep and stuff like that, the next thing would be to actually find out if you're deficient in anything, right? right. If there's something that your, your body needs and you're missing, whether right. it be vitamin D, zinc, or iron, something that you're not getting enough of, magnesium... And that can make a big difference in your sleep, health, performance. Like, to me, you're better off looking one, two. It's a lot cheaper, by the way, too. Most of those yeah. supplements are relatively cheap to supplement with, and you're giving your body something that you've tested for. That you go, oh wow, yeah. I'm under. I, I don't have enough vitamin D. That is so important for so many different functions. Yeah. That, okay, well, let, instead of me going out and getting some experimental supplement or new thing that biohackers are talking about. It's like, I'm going to go take, I'm going to discipline myself to take my vitamin D every single day since that will make a greater impact. Yeah. And look, I'm going to read, uh, Doug just pulled up a study. So I'm going to give you an example, right? So NMN supplementation promotes anti-aging miRNA expression profile in the aorta <laughs> of aged mice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean? That That's means so specific. That just means that. That means that there's this anti-aging profile that we think is anti-aging, and it it looks like it promotes that. And then here's the part the rest of the study. Predicting epigenetic rejuvenation and anti atherogenic <laughs> effects. Predicting. This a, is so a, a like, lot of probably words. Yeah, like and we don't know. Like we don't know if you if you change the profile, that profile through supplementation, is that the same thing as it's a bit looking of a at, leap. Yeah, uh, is that the same thing as looking at a young aorta? There's like three leaps. There's like <laughs> yeah, three like leaps in big, the huge leaps. There's fifteen words and there's three yeah. leaps in there. Yeah. <laughs> None of it is human related. Our next caller is Colby from North Carolina. What's up, Colby? How can we help you? Uh, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, first off, uh, thanks so much for what you guys do. Uh, really appreciate uh, all the uh, context you guys bring to this uh, instead of uh, peddling a one size fits all kind of thing. So I appreciate that. Um, I guess a little backstory first. Uh, I'm 39, um, kind of just uh, trying to be a healthy, strong guy. Um, but like many people who call in, um, that journey started some time ago with CrossFit for me. Um, I uh, really enjoyed it. It, you know, it gave me uh, an entry to strength training, uh, but I would never benefit from consistency because I would hurt myself, be out for two, three, four weeks, get back into it for a month or two, hurt myself. Um, so I, 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 strayed away, I strayed away from that, and uh, I really liked the Olympic weightlifting. So I moved to another gym that did uh, Olympic weightlifting and strength and conditioning, and then that kind of got a little boring for me, um, so I just chose to focus on strength and conditioning. Been pretty consistent with that now. 
Um, but um, so my actual question comes from an episode you guys did recently where you said that um, chase performance and aesthetics will follow, mm. which I really like that. Um, so I'm curious if there is some ways that you can add some movements or some exercises to a strength focused workout uh, that would um, accelerate some of the aesthetic gains uh, because I'm not quite there uh, in the ways that I would hope to be. Okay. Are well, you, you can combine, you can combine the two. We have a, um, a sexy athlete bundle, I believe, which includes maps, aesthetic and mass performance. And so, so think of it this way. Let's say you have four workouts in the week, Colby, you mm -hmm. could make two and two, right? So two performance kind of based, uh, two like aesthetic, maybe bodybuilder focused, or you could go three and one, depending on which one's more important to you, or mix it up. Or you could run one yeah. for a while, and then like that's yeah. the way the sexy. That's another way to say you could do performance and add the focus sessions in between. Yeah, you know, there's lots of ways you could kind of skin this cat. Are yeah. you are you familiar with any of our programs? Do you have any of them, Colby? Well, that was kind of my follow up was I've really been looking at them um, recently and um, I've been looking at the one that I think was anabolic to performance to something. There was like a little three pack there. But so that was kind of my follow up question was, is there a program you guys would um, push me towards that would be a, a good strength focus that might, you know, help you get bigger arms in the process or something? So if you would allow me to be your coach and tell you exactly what I would want you to do, it'd be I'd love to see you run anabolic, run performance, and then run mass aesthetic. Because in that it, order. In yeah. that order. Because it literally it's the ideal. It, that that it's gonna hit everything that you're looking for. And then after you run through all three of those, which by the way is going to take you the, the next year to get through, right? Each one of them is about three three months or so. So once you go through all three of them, then you can kind of do what Sal was saying, where you can kind of pick and pull from some of them. Like, oh, I'm going to run, you know, two days a week. That's going to look like MAPS performance. The other two days, I'm going to pull in MAPS aesthetic. Like, and that we encourage that, right? After we tell people, like, you know, trust the process and, and our expertise in building and writing programs, follow it to a T. And then after that, you can start to kind of play with and mold yeah. uh, to more to your specific goals. And I, I think that that order would be ideal. Yeah. The other thing to consider too, Colby, with aesthetics, uh, especially for men, is getting lean makes a huge difference with aesthetics. You get away. You, I mean, just getting somebody to get down to, you know, nine, ten percent body fat, and it's like all of a sudden, just these aesthetics really start to pop out. So I don't know how lean you are. I don't know what your body fat percentage, or if you've ever really gotten to that point where you, you can see that kind of muscle definition. But that makes a tremendous difference when it comes to aesthetics. And sometimes we think we need, we want to get bigger to improve our aesthetics, when in fact we just need to get a little leaner. Well, this honestly it sounds like to me, and, and just because like I'm susceptible to wanting to just do athletic moves, wanting to just do Olympic lifts, wanting to just kind of go in that performance world only exclusively. Uh, once I ventured into hypertrophy training, it was game changer for me. And I don't know if you've actually put a, an entire focus on hypertrophy training specifically, but to interrupt, uh, you know, that and create a whole new stimulus for your body, it's going to respond and you're going to love it. Yeah. So we're going to do you, since you don't have those programs, we'll send them to you. It's the RGB bundle. So you'll actually get all three and then follow them in that order. Maps anabolic, maps performance, and then maps aesthetic. And you should get okay. a, a great deal of what you're looking for. Great. Yeah. I appreciate it. No problem. There you go, brother. Awesome. Thanks guys. You're welcome. You know, Justin is is right. Like he, when he actually started to do that, his uh, you know sex appeal on the you know, sexometer <laughs> went from like a, a, a four to like a solid six after he started. I, doing I finally that. got some of your DMs. Yeah, with, a uh, sol <laughs> it was a solid six. Solid six. Solid Unfortunately, six. it was all dudes. <laughs> it looked, hey, uh, let me at tell least you, I started getting DMs, dude. Yeah. Hey, you get a guy tells you you look good. You look good. That's true. That's, That's probably true. a it's better a compliment. compliment yeah, it's yeah. a better compliment. I think. About, I think that most guys are actually oh, truly cool. seeking that. Instead oh, of the oh yeah. Be honest. Okay. <laughs> at this at this age right now, you're working out the gym. What's more, what is going to make you feel more impressed? Yeah. If a girl walks up to you and goes, you have a nice yeah, back, yeah, yeah. or if a dude comes up and be like, no. dude, your back is. Yeah. Your, your arms are looking sick, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, high five. Yeah, Let's that's go. like, that's worth like 10 girls saying that to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just being honest here. Yeah, no, his question is common, right? The, the whole balancing of performance and aesthetics. They do work very well together. They really do. I mean, you can go extreme in one or the other, but you can get, you can get a great balance with the two because they do communicate well to each other. They're not competing, you know, signals necessarily like you would find with other type of uh, pursuits. Well, we always have to remember, you know, I forget sometimes uh, 
the amount of people that are probably just finding us today, right? I mean, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's probably thousands every day that are listening to their very first show. And we just assume that they kind of know the way we wrote these and the intent that we wrote them in, right? It's, and that, this is why we wrote this. Like we wrote the, the you know, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance and MAPS Aesthetic in that order because it really is, for the most part, there's always exceptions to the rule and people with very, very specific, narrow goals. But for the general population that just wants to move better, look better, get stronger, like that is the order that I would take all those clients yeah. in so they could learn kind of the the process of building routines around those specific adaptations. And then from there, we would mold and modify based off of the things they like, they don't like, and more specific to their goals. But I mean, when I talk to someone uh, outside of, of our listener base and I'm telling them about the programs, like you look at it like an like a education process. Yeah. Like that's I mean, we wrote them with that intent. That's why they have so much stuff inside them is like, we weren't just like telling people, go work out, go try this workout mm -hmm. routine. It's like we're trying to educate you on how to build a program for yourself. Yeah. I can't stop thinking about the sexometer. I haven't seen this thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a scientific tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. I'll have Chokey posted on Instagram. It starts like this and then it yeah. Yeah. gets high noon. Solid six. Our next caller is Nicholas from Massachusetts. What's up, Nicholas? How can we help you? Hey, um, so the question I submitted to you guys was, uh, how do you know when you've reached your genetic growth potential? And I very vague question, but based on maybe uh, your age and training style. Oh, that's a, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough one, Nick. How long have you been working out consistently for? And how old are you? This sounds like a Facebook uh, formula, you know? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. a sign up for your fa what your their age. What your favorite color tells you about your genetic potential. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So how long have you been training consistently and how old are you? Uh, 38. Um, I've been, I started lifting when I was in like second grade with my dad. My dad was a, uh, he was a runner, Olympic alternative. And, um, he got me into running and lifting really early. Once I hit 18, I took my first, um, like basics for lifting, um, like a fundamental class in college. And then, um, from 18 to now I've lifted consistently, um, doing a bunch of different ways of lifting. Um, when I lived in New York, I was doing, a Strongman training with some strongmen. I, I worked out with at a local gym. Um, I've been doing martial arts for um, probably about 15 years now. And um, in between all that, I just, uh, you know, I, I, I'm basically trying to build my body up to be more durable and uh, stronger and faster. That's great. Well, okay. So we have a website. It's got a mus muscular potential calculator. I don't, when we get the website, I'm going to get the actual website for Doug. It's and, mapsmacro.com. Oh, mapsmacro.com. And it's one of the links on there. Yeah, there's a link on there for to figure out your your muscular potential. Now, it's this pretty, is, it's a pretty generic good formula. It's generic and, and they based it off of the top natural bodybuilders and the sizes of their wrists and in their their ankles and so it's super super general. But you know, here's a deal. I mean, it's hard to say you've been doing this for a long time. And I know why you're asking this question, right? You're, you're motivated by changes in your body. You want to look forward to new things. You know, I, I'm sure at this point with being the fact that you, you, you've you been doing martial arts for a long time, you've been working out for a long time, you probably love the process, right? I'm, I'm assuming you love the process of exercise regardless of the listen, results. Listen, listen, Sal. The answer is way easier than that. If you haven't ran through every MAPS program at least twice, there's still potential. <laughs> yeah, there you go. 10% mm -hmm. <laughs> ten more. So, yeah. So, yeah. If, you, if you haven't done every one of those at least twice, yeah. there's still room, brother. Yeah. Totally. No, I mean, but you, you get what I'm saying, right, Nick? Like, if, if you love the yeah. process, um, th that's where you end up. You know, once you start to get older and you've been doing this for a long time, I've been doing it a long time too. I'm at the point now where, and I love, look, I love making gains and strength. I love seeing my body change. Am I going to beat my best all-time PRs? Can I? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not, but I love the process so much. I'm never going to stop. And then if you, if you need that motivation, I suggest you try this. This is a fun little trick. <laughs> maybe not good to do all the time. This might be my ego talking, but compare yourself to your 38 year old friends that haven't worked out yeah. and you see, and wait and watch as you guys get older how much further apart you get from them in terms of how you look and your feel and performance and health. So that's that's the that's the real value. So you, you might even start declining once you hit your mm -hmm. mid-40s in comparison to where you were in your mid-30s, but compare yourself to other people in their mid-40s, you're going to look like you're from a different planet. Well, have you actually hit a wall right now? Is that what's like spurring yeah, this question? Yeah, so I've, I've hit a wall. 
um, uh, pre COVID, I was doing, um, a training routine where I, you know, I would pick, uh, basically the big five lifts and I would do 10 sets of about, um, maybe 70 to 80% of my one rep max. I would knock out three or four reps and then I'd go immediately into another big lift for three to four reps, catch my breath, go back. And I would do that 10 times. I do 10 sets of that for each one of the lifts. It was, it was a pretty intense, uh, Work workout. Uh, most of the time I needed a spotter based on, you know, the weight I'm doing and how many, yeah. how many sets, and I was seeing good results. Um, COVID hit and I, I was uh, remanded to lifting in my basement with basically just a rack and a bar. Still got a lot of work done, but um, since uh, probably last year, I can't basically put any more weight on the bar. Uh, if I do it incrementally, then I find that, you know, the weight drops back down. I'm not able to hit that lift for another couple of weeks, maybe a month. Um, a lot of different programs I've been involved in trying to, trying to increase strength and, uh, um, endurance as far as lifting. And, uh, my weight has stayed pretty much consistent. I've eaten more, I've eaten less, uh, weight's not really getting above 190 and I'm six feet tall. So stuck at 190, about 10 to 11% body fat. Um, I know there's other factors like, uh, I got my testosterone levels tested. I am low. Uh, I don't sleep enough. I know that. Um, mm-hmm. with shift work and call outs and, uh, overtimes, two kids, uh, hobbies, I'm getting about six hours of sleep, maybe a night. Oh, it wow. was four. Yeah, so I'm working up from four. Um, well, that's, so it's just, that's a, big a lot one, of demand. Man. Yeah. in in conjunction with that type of a workout, I mean, there, yeah. there might be so a little, demanding. there might be a nice little tweak right there in itself. Right. So just, just hearing you say that now knowing that you're you're already kind of stressing yourself yeah. a little bit with with the kids and the sleep because we know what that's like um and then in addition to that your training routine is pretty damn intense uh sal says this really well where he, he tells people you know what your body can in, tolerate and what's ideal for it are two different things so you may have trained yourself to be able to tolerate or handle that much intensity in your workout but your body may be trying to tell you that this is not what's ideal for it to continue to see progress so uh, that would be something right away I tweak. I know I made the joke about running through every MAPS program twice before you hit your muscle potential. It's a little bit of a joke. But out of seriousness, have you actually kind of gone through and looked at our programs? Are there any of them that you've ran before or any of them that interest you? Because I have an idea on, on which one I'd like to see you run. Um, you guys always talk about the the MAPS anabolic. Mm-hmm. And um, I started reading through them a couple nights ago. I I've looked at them. Uh, I, I actually changed my training routine recently because I, I figured I was overtraining. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I started backing off on the weight. So one day a week, I'm doing high reps, big five. Then I'll take a day off to do some like cardio stretch. I go to physical therapy for my back. Um, then the next day, I'll hit like a medium eight to 12 reps of like uh, 60, 70, maybe up to 80%. And then one day a week, um, after another break day, I will uh, go back to lifting heavy and trying to get closer to my uh, 90% one rep max. Um, I, I've taken the number of sets down. Uh, I've focused a lot more on the uh, warm up work and mm-hmm. just basically going through the movement of the lift mm-hmm. to make sure that my movement is consistent no matter how much weight I'm doing. And um, I've been trying to do that and still no movement, but I'd have to look at your, your routines a little bit more in depth. And I, I mentioned in the email that I've, I've paid for online programs. I did uh, the Julian Smith one, did that for about a year or two. It, it was just way too much volume. A ton of volume. So I, I'm in the gym for two and a half, three hours yeah, doing the yeah, workout. Yeah, yeah. Nick, Nick this, so here's something that's two things. First off, um, if your testosterone is low, uh, hormone therapy for me at least was completely, I mean, I, I, Gained 12 pounds of lean body mass because mine was low too. Brought it up to the you know normal high. It was a game changer. But here's the second part, and this is something that's interesting for those of us that have been working out for many many years. You're you're get you're getting close to 40, and I've actually started to really piece this together even for myself. And if you look at studies, that actually kind of show this. You need less volume, less frequency, and less intensity as you get older to get yep. the same. Less is more at this. Point. The same results, yeah. So. Um, I, I lift hard four days a week now. I was, I was a five and six day a week kind of guy before. Now, I, I could tolerate it if I, if I did it now, but I, I wouldn't be progressing as well as I am right now. So especially with muscle memory and especially with your past. So because you've been training for so long, 
less actually starts to get you better results mm -hmm. as you start to get older. So I would back way down and well, start there. on the intensity. You're yeah. trying to hit like 90% of your one rep max. I, I, you know, I would, I would go way less than that. And, you know, like really feel like the two reps short of failure. I don't know if like you're going, like you said, you had a spotter. So that's another thing is like, you might be going, you know, too close to failure uh, to where, you know, it affects the, the workouts preceding that. So, uh, you know, you should be able to get into the, the following workouts energized and feeling like your body's responding even more. So you can build upon that versus, you know, uh, being so hammered that your body feels like, you know, it's grinding its way through. So here's my prescription and where I was heading. Okay. Uh, we'll give you MAPS anabolic. So I'm going to have Doug send that over to you. you start there. Uh, when you train that, two, make sure you leave uh, two reps in the tank, right? Two in the tank. Don't train to failure. You don't need a spotter. You don't, need, you don't even need to go to failure yourself. So leave two reps in the tank on all the exercises. After that, go to performance and then strong. So that if I, if I had a hold of you, you were a client of mine, I would convince you to back. And while we're backing off too, I, we're, we're, I would be talking to you about your sleep routine and maybe getting your blood work done. And you know, by the way, too, we have a free hormones uh, forum, so you can join it for free. We have doctors that go in there and speak twice a month. That's totally free to you. You can ask them questions. It's amazing. So if you're not taking advantage of that, take advantage of that. It's mine. Yeah, I signed up for it. Oh, okay. you did. Perfect. Okay, good, Perfect. good. Yeah. So make sure you're, you're taking advantage of that, talking to those guys. They're brilliant when it comes to talking about hormones. Uh, so th that's what I would do. I would back you. And it's a three day a week type of program. It's full body. I would be really pushing you not to, to push beyond what it's programmed in there and really focus on our sleep. Make sure we're dialing in there, getting yourself adequate rest. Uh, and then from there, move to like a performance. I think you'll enjoy the performance of a training. You'll benefit from the mobility work. And then I think strong, I think you would really like, uh, I don't know how much you've done a lot of the unconventional type of lifts, but uh, I love to send that program to people that uh, have been training consistently in the kind of bodybuilder style. Or it's very posterior ha uh, chain heavy, which is awesome. Yeah, and it's so unique, right? There's a lot of movements in there that, you know, even if you've been lifting a long time that you've never really trained. There's not a lot of people that say like, oh, yeah, I do circus presses all the time, you know, or, you know, sandbag carries. That's a, that's a normal part of my routine. So it's got a lot of unconventional lifts in there that, you know, that's another thing that might shake up a little bit, uh, breaking us through that plateau is just is, is focusing on a new adaptation okay that sounds like solid advice excellent so we'll send that program over to you and then again keep keep what i said in mind and you will you you may find that less as you get older starts to behave in the ways that your old workouts did with more um, your body may respond much better i'm finding this out right now for myself and it's it's very different than how i responded 10 years ago so give that a shot okay so less yep yep all right thanks for calling in all right. Thanks for having me. No problem. Yeah, it's weird. It is very strange. Like, uh, you know, I, I cut, I went down from six days a week to five days a week, got a little bit better progress, then went from five to four with an added mobility day. So I have one day where I do kind of mobility and, you know, a little core work or whatever. Yeah. And I'm getting great results. And you'll find that, especially if you worked out in the past and you've got this base that's kind of following you. Mm hmm you need less to get better results. And it's just, as you age, it's just kind of just the I, way it is. Honestly, I think that uh, people just don't realize how much stress they're, they're, you know, accumulating throughout the day. And, and that, whether that be work stress, you know, yeah. relationship stress, like lack of sleep stress, like, I feel like there's just a lot more responsibilities. There's a lot more demand uh, on, on adults, uh, you know, as they go forward. They don't really like put that in comparison to physical stress. That's what I, I mean, I'm with you on that. I think it's less about the age and it's more so that you've been redlining your whole life and you don't even know it and you yeah. don't even realize it. Then all of a sudden you get older and you, it kind of forces you. Yeah, what you. was your biggest worry when you were 25, right? Yeah, yeah. Where are we going Nothing. Saturday? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so yeah, and you've just been, you've been, you've been burning the candle both ends and then finally you, you something forces you to back off a little bit and then all of a sudden you realize oh shit my body's responding so well it's just tough because especially if you've been working out for a long time you think you know yeah. right what works for you but the context has changed well what you say what you say i think is so good which is the you know understanding that what you tolerate and what is best or ideal or yeah. optimal for gains is different. Yep. Uh, that that can't be said enough. Like that, yeah. that, that, it's, that it's it, all dose dependent. I don't I don't I definitely didn't think that way as a as, even as a young trainer. No, it was all about the max I could tolerate. Yeah. If yeah. I could do if I wasn't sore enough or I could handle yeah. another set or another because everything that you see 
especially on social media, is promoting that. The the all out intensity yeah. and the more and the push, the drive, the motivation. So it's it makes you think that I I gotta do more, I can do more, I can do more. And it's like, no, there's 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 an amount that your body can tolerate, and then there's an amount that is optimal for the best results. And so and they're not the same at all. And figuring that out for yourself is very difficult, especially I think when we're younger and we're fig- kind of figuring our whole way out and figuring out how to program and train and diet. And it's obvious when his his uh, he's at a hard plateau, his sleep is terrible, and his hormones. I mean, how many more signs do you need that you're you're overdoing it? It's like that's for sure. And it's hard. You take someone. What do you say? Like two years old. He's been training with his dad. To a second grade. Yeah. So he's he's like he's been he's been an athletic person his whole entire right. life so he has that kind of athletic mind i mean he did what his dad was an olympic alternate mm-hmm. so you know i mean he's got you, good genetics for, yeah, for, right for and, you, and you know there's and he's got that com- probably a competitive aspect the way he approaches everything so you know telling that guy that yo you're five six day a week i want you to train twice a week yeah. i mean that's really i would oh, take him the all the way back down to, to two or three do less. yeah our next caller is sarah from connecticut what's up sarah how can we help you Hi. Um, so I just want to start off by saying I am so grateful that you guys are letting me ask my question and I'm so excited to be asking it. I am a longtime fan. I've been around since Adam was competing and, um, you guys have truly been like the magic pill of like my health and fitness journey. And so I just want to say thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Sal is a pill to work with too, in case you're wondering. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, so my question is, right um, I'm a high school biology teacher and I've been given the opportunity to pilot and create a biology of sports performance class at my school. Cool. Um, so this is truly an opportunity for me to create a dream job. So I want to do it right and make sure it's as successful as possible. It's meant to be geared toward the high school athletes so they can learn how to maximize their performance in their sport through training, nutrition, and recovery, although the regular student will also be allowed entry into the class. I'm very excited to say that my principal cleared this for a year-long science elective class and will be allowed to access the school's brand new weight room two days a week during class time. Uh, We will spend the other three days of the week in the classroom. The goal for students by the end of the year is to design and implement a five-week program working towards a goal they identify to help them better perform at their sport. The biology portion of the class will be focusing on anatomy and physiology of relevant body systems, and we'll be working on improving scientific literacy by unpacking and analyzing scientific studies, some of which I plan to grab from what you guys have discussed on the show. Um, so I need your help in planning the sequence of how to teach the fundamentals of training principles to students. There's the classroom portion of things like how to manage frequency, volume, and intensity, movement patterns such as squat, hinge, press, and pull, movement patterns in different planes of movement such as the sagittal plane, the transverse plane, and rotational movements, Mm -hmm. the difference in benefits of compound versus isolation movements, the difference and benefits of bilateral and unilateral movements, and eventually how to possibly write an effective training program. Wow, you're um, then there's the portion yeah, of I teaching proper form and mechanics of lifts in the weight room. Um, so I will also have access to bands and PVC pipes in the classroom for working on mobility, isometrics, and things like trigger sessions. I want to do my best to blend a theory, what the science says, and reality to give students a deep understanding of how they can be the best athletes they can be. Um, So my question is, how would you recommend to sequence teaching training to kids both in the classroom and weight room simultaneously as theory and implementation don't always line up? Uh, This is awesome. Yeah, I I wish I had you. Everything you just said is awesome. Yeah, and like Justin said, you obviously have been listening to the show for a long time. Uh, This is way cool. You know what? Um, Justin, what do you think about sharing with her what you're doing right now with the the football team, the high school football team? Yeah, I think the the way you laid that out with a the isometric foundation, and then you build upon that. You want mm-hmm. if you want something with like a philosophy or a theory behind it on like how we would teach somebody those. I think what you're doing yeah. with them is a, a pretty solid. Foundation. I think what you're proposing is much more comprehensive. Um, what I had to kind of do was scale back in terms of what I could establish pretty quickly without having to uh, educate and explain too much. 
Um, uh, be, and that was like a big hurdle for me because I want to establish basically everything you just mentioned. It's amazing. <laughs> like I, I, I think this is a whole course that, you know, kids could go through and find a ton of value with. Uh, so for me, it was really just about like hitting, um, you know, the biggest offenders as quickly as possible. And that's really just like body communication and, and stability and control of their body. Um, and so that's where I, I found a lot of value in isometrics and, and placing them in uh, these positions and these split stance positions in, um, you know, positions where they have to build strength and, and generate force. Uh, so we've been going through like the first month, month and a half, we're going to be doing isometric heavy and then doing a unilateral in conjunction with that to uh, address a lot of those things right out of the gates uh, and then progressing them further into uh, like more of our five by five type style with compound lifts. Um, and so, I mean, I have, I have this whole thing as a potential uh, full blown program for student athletes, uh, you know, in the making, but that's something that, uh, you know, maybe we can communicate offline later and I can kind of show you the full sort of uh, scope of it. Yeah, Sarah, you know, um, I'm going to speak from a student perspective. Okay. So first off, I wish I could take this class. I wish I had <laughs> yeah. you as a teacher Yeah. in high school. It sounds super awesome. I know the challenge with teaching anything to anyone is, can I get them excited about it? Because obviously an excited, interested student is going to absorb way more information than one that's maybe not so excited and not so interested. So you've been listening to the show for a long time. And so you already know that our formula is entertain and then also throw in information. And we did that on purpose because we, we learned as, as trainers that most of our clients were not fitness fanatics. I mean, if I, if I was talking to a fitness fanatic, I could get real deep in the weeds with the science and talk specifically about training and adaptation, and they would love it. Like, if I did that to my clients, I would have lost half of them, you know, three months in. So I had to really figure out how to communicate to them in effective ways. What I'm going to recommend to you is to use a lot of analogies. Analogies are really cool. Like, an example would be the analogy that we use about the central nervous system and, the, and, the, and muscles and, and their relationship. And I like to use a speaker versus the amplifier analogy. Another thing would be to, to talk about myths, right? So when you have your students in there, you could talk about some of the most common myths, like um, lifting weights makes you bulky, right? That's a big myth. And, um, you know, how to speed up your metabolism. Like, I think that would get kids kind of excited. Like, what do you mean faster metabolism? What does that look like? And I thought, you know, lifting weights did make me bulky. You may even want to bring up contributions of different, uh, you know, types of exercise or sports into kind of what you're talking about. So I would have a picture of Arnold. What have bodybuilders taught us about how the body adapts to exercise? Like what has powerlifters taught us? And you can use celebrities so that the kids can be like, oh, I know Lance Armstrong. Like what did we learn from that kind of training and how does that work? And how does that make my body perform, you know, even better? You might even put something up and say, why do we find attractive bodies attractive, right? So that's kind of a, a lore. Like, what is that? What are, you, what are you talking about? Well, why do we think men with broad shoulders and tight waist, like, well, that may show signs of better performance and higher testosterone levels. And why do we find, you know, uh, you know, these types of things to look better than others? There's a biological component. I think those things would make people very interested in, in kind of what you're talking about. But I honestly, you ran down the list of the stuff you're going to talk about. Yeah. I can't think of anything else yeah. that I would add really aside from just trying to make it yeah. kind of to hook them, Engaging. right? Engaging. Yeah, yeah. Hook them with the myths and the, you know, maybe ask them like, you know, what's a better way to, if somebody's trying to get lean and lose weight, what's a better approach? And then you can put like running every yeah. single day, lifting weights or whatever. And then you can well, go in and kind of counter some of the myths because that gets people, you know, hooked right out the I gates. like the example of your different avatars and you can make it very simple in terms of like what typically like their training protocol would right, look right. like as a difference just because of what you brought up with them trying to create their own program. It'd be cool to put those examples there just to give them some, some kind of baseline. Right. For every one of these uh, adaptations that you went through, which I think are all the ones that we'd want to cover in a foundational, uh, you know, class like this i would do exactly that but before we get like too deep in the weeds because this literally we could turn this into like a three-hour conversation right here <laughs> yeah. um i mean that'd be great I wouldn't mind at all. well this is what i'm going to do for you so and, and i think this is the best place for us to start um i i think all of us are when you were reading it off you should see the looks on all of our faces everybody was like oh this is so cool um I, we would love to help you so 
I think the I think the the next step for us to help you would be it, it already sounds like you're on the right track. I think to start to to lay out what the curriculum mm-hmm. is going to look like and then running it by Justin or one of us or all of us. Um, you can email us personally. Uh, when we when we hang up, I'll have Jerry because you're in contact with her. Give you our personal emails, and then what we can do is just kind of you know as you're working through it uh, and you and you put stuff together, we can give our feedback yeah. of oh I love that or maybe add this to it. Um, I think that's probably where we'd be the most valuable versus giving you all these like vague random ideas. Yeah, you know you know what was really cool too. Totally. You know, just something else, Sarah, is that when you show. When you can show a student a change immediately in how their body's moving, it's really exciting. So I remember one time I took one of my first certifications, and they were talking about how you could get a muscle to elongate easier. So what they did is they put us in this on the floor. They had us do a hamstring stretch. You could only go so far. And then they said, now I want you to push against the person who's stretching your hamstring and hold that for 30 seconds, which I did, and then relax. And all of a sudden, I got three more inches of flexibility immediately, right? So I was like, oh my gosh, this is so weird. You know, it's like almost like doing a an experiment in class where you're showing, you know, the effect of something right away. Like that kind of stuff gets people so engaged and so interested in, in kind of what's going on. So I, I can't stress that enough. Like if I would, and I did, I did volunteer a few times and teach uh, nutrition and exercise to students. And I, I really get them excited by doing stuff like that. Cause once I got them engaged, it was the rest was, you know, well, I mean, easy. I think we're, we're throwing a bunch of things at Sarah that she's probably good at. She's a fucking yeah. teacher, right? Yeah. So I think what you're looking from us is the expertise on how you program the curriculum. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I definitely think that we can help and I, and Let's I, do it. and I would like to help you. So, yeah. and I think the place that we start is you begin laying out what is, you know, what is, you know, first month or week of the curriculum you're planning on it to look like, and then allow us to kind of put our two cents in, um, and, and do that. And I think this is great because, Justin is literally in this world right now. We were on the yeah. last, uh, we were flying from Utah just last week or the week before, and we were all looking over what he was creating for these high school students right now. So this is kind of where we're at right now. And I think that uh, maybe you guys could definitely help each other out. Yeah, that would be, that would be very much appreciated. Um, Cause that, that is where I'm struggling. It's I, like, I know all these principles for myself and I know how to apply them to myself, but in terms of like how to teach it to kids. So it's understandable and digestible is where I'm struggling. So like the order of how to teach it to them. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Yeah. We'd love to get involved. So yeah. Appreciate your questions there. And thank you so much for what you're doing. These kids are really lucky. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. How, how fun. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had that class. Yeah. I know. Right. It's, you know, though, it's really exciting that, um, that we're seeing stuff like this. I mean, it, it's, I mean, we, God, when we all were in school, like, you know, PE was the extent of, you know, any sort of, you know, anatomy or physical education that you got. And it was so generic. I just think and- if you teach kids about their bodies and what's happening and here's why you feel this way and here's what happens when you do this and that, mm-hmm. I think it's so valuable. It's like, this is like valuable life information mm-hmm. because- when I get them as adults, as a trainer, yeah. and they hire me, we have to unpack so oh, much nonsense. They just they just don't know anything about yeah. what's going on and how this works and why do I feel this way? And it's like, my God, we could have learned that. A long well, time I love. I really loved your idea of give these kids a you know a famous person or athlete. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know. I was have, picturing yeah, it. That's yeah. perfect, right? Like literally, you could ch- you know, and that's how I think I would write this curriculum. And let's let the way Justin programmed to give like a generic overview is like you know he he did a lot of. Uh, central nervous system training at the beginning, right? So yeah. isometric, right? So that's the foundation of it, right? Mm-hmm. So then I would I would pick like a, a, a sport or a, or a person that they, you can connect that to and say, what did they teach us about that? And be like the benefits of isometrics and then break down all the science that supports that. And then so for this first month, kids, we are going to be learning some of the best isometric moves and this is how we would apply it to your workout. This yeah. is why we're doing it. Here's where we learned it from. Yeah, or, or imagine you have a picture of like the rock. Like how does, uh, how do you guys think the rock works out? How he actually works out what could we? What, what do you think he could do different? What can we learn from that? What about this particular celebrity, this person? Because yeah. it just gets the kids like, oh, I, I follow that person. I, I want to see what they're doing, you know, yeah. just to get them engaged. Yeah, so. and it's it's trial and error too. So she doesn't have to put so much pressure on this to be right. perfect. Like honestly, that's the biggest thing I've learned is uh, as I'm going through it, I'm writing notes even to the program that I had written down on paper. And this is just something we learned as trainers, anyways. Is that 
you know, we iterate, we constantly iterate yeah. based off of the feedback. And yep. so, um, you know, it's going to find that it's obviously a different audience um, and, and they're going to respond a little bit differently. And like you said, I think the celebrity angle, you're going to find, you know, moments like that where it's more relatable, definitely lean into those moments. Totally. Look, if you like our information, Head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal and Adam is at mindpumpadam.